It's a happy Monday morning. It actually happens to be Christmas Eve, 2018, and I'm working on our New Holland skid loader. So we had an issue a couple weeks ago where one of the locking pins on the quick attach mount of the skid loader was not dropping down. And uh, upon further investigation, I found that this pin inside here got broke off of that. So here's what this looks like when it's all put together. All right, so you've got your locking pin. This slides up or down depending on um, if your system is locked or not. But I'm going to just kind of quickly walk through how you can get all those parts out. And let me tell you, it's kind of a real pain. So I'm going to put everything back together without the bolts, and then I'll just kind of show you what I did to get it apart. So, um, oh yeah, and here's the new pieces. They're so shiny. <laughs> here's the old ones. New ones. Old ones. Before you do anything else is take a power washer and just clean everything in there because there was so much mud in there. In fact, that's the reason why ours broke is because that mud froze and then we tried to take off one of the buckets and that frozen mud was like concrete and just broke the pin. So <clears throat> make sure it's clean. Clean it out and then you're going to have to take out this bolt and this bolt. That's easy enough. And then on the bottom, there's a bolt here and a bolt here that you have to remove. And then there's a bolt here and a bolt way up in there. The one that's way up in there is really hard. And this side, same thing, bolt here and a bolt way up in there. After you get that done, you can kind of beat that thing off. So that lets you get that plate out of the way. And next, you have this whole fancy system. These parts actually move when the cylinder um, pushes these like locking triangular blocks Oh, they pivot around this pointer here, so they go like this, kind of, and that's what changes um, the position of these pins down here. So this area needs to be cleaned. If there's mud in there, it's going to cause damage eventually, wear through the cable, do something terrible. Um, so that's open. Now we're working on this side. What you're going to have to do is there's a little pin right inside here, okay? Um, just one of these little pins not sure but you want to take that and beat that out from the bottom so you'll ding 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 pound that out as soon as you get that pounded out you can pull out this and that all just kind of falls apart right there okay so this cylinder isn't going to fall out because it's still held in on that side but now this cylinder's dropped and this bar is dropped keep these pieces because they don't come in the new kit you'll need to put them back on. Um, next, you're going to have to do something that's really annoying. You're going to have to take this little tiny plug on the back of here out, okay? So there's a little plug right here, and after you work that out, which it was really stuck, use lots of this breakaway stuff, um, get that out, and then you can pound another pin out, which is this pin right here, because this is what's in there. The locking pin is sitting in there, and you need to tap this pin, ding, 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 out, right there. So after you get that taken out, you can drop this out the bottom, and then all you have to do is get the other pieces out the top. But in order to do that, we need to pull this entire triangular block in here, unless the bolt's broken, which it was in my case, and so the pieces could kind of come out one by one. But <clears throat> you're going to have to disconnect this arm. So there's one bolt right here. Here's on the side that's still attached. You can see there's just one bolt here. You take out that bolt, and then you need to pry and pound and pull until you get this thing popped out, okay? Set that aside. That drops this arm, which this isn't going to fall off because it's still attached on this side. Now over in here, you can see there's a hole. That is where there's another pin. That's the pin that, that the triangular block pivots on, okay? And it's got a tiny little key on it, you know, this kind. And I got it popped off, and then you can tap that out or pull that out from this side. And that should release the whole block, and then you can carefully <clears throat> pull it out. So this was in, was in this position, like that inside there. And when it unlocked I think it was about like this and then when it locks it pushes that over 
which is what forces that spring to compress in this column. So, just kind of a and then it stays there, and then it unlocks. So, after you get that out, you can take this piece out. They send a new one in the kit, which is right here. And now we really just got to put the whole thing back together, which is going to be a little bit more difficult. I think that we have to assemble. I think we need to put this piece in. Um, the bolt next. The sprocket thingy, whatever you want to call that. That main spring. And then the bottom of that. I think all this has to be assembled before you can put it back in. But this is the difficult part because you have to compress this spring at least at least a half inch or so in order to get this started. And as soon as you start that, then you can use this 12-pointed uh, headed bolt right here to tighten it down. But I'm going to need to get that figured out, so I'm going to work on that here, and I'll show you what I do to do it. After a good deal of um, trying to get this done, I finally got it. Um, I used this press that we got recently. Not made by Ford, by the way, but it looks cool. Um, and compressed it enough to get the screw started. It was actually a little bit more difficult than I expected, but now as you can see, this whole unit is one. Um, it's not tightened all the way. I just wanted to show you that I do have it in there, and I think it's, I think it's all in correctly. So this is debatably one of the worst parts, but you have this all put together. Okay, looks pretty good. Make sure that this pin is flush. And then you're going to have to put this between modes. I'm calling them modes, but basically the spots that the spring really wants to be, which are here, clunk, because it's a flat surface, here, clunk, because it's a flat surface, and here, clunk, because it's a flat surface. But you want this spring to lock in between the two flat surfaces, all right? I'm going to push it. And be careful, because this is a pinch hazard. Like, big time pinch hazard. Ugh. All right, so... Uh, See, it's not easy. Okay. That's between modes. All right. So now I'm going to very carefully insert this because I want to get this in there so that's close to where this pin needs to line up in that hole. And then I want this to pop down into this position. Okay. Very carefully. Looks like it's just barely going to fit. And it's so close to being able to line up. Okay, there. I locked it over in the position that I wanted. You heard it pop back over. Now we can take our pin, which I would suggest putting some sort of something. Um, grease would be better. This is what I have on hand, some like WD-40 type stuff. Grease it. And gently... Okay, so that is now put in place. I just have to put the other um, pin, cotter pin or whatever you want to call it, onto the other side. And we should be able to get these hooked back up, which there's this bar right here. This is uh, attached to the indicator that tells you whether or not the thing's locked or unlocked. So let's work toward that. Lift it up carefully. Get it so it's nearly lined up. Here's that pin. And again, very gently so as not to mar anything up. Gonna tap that back home and try to get it. So that it's lined up well for that pin to drop in. Man, putting stuff back together is so much more difficult than taking it apart sometimes. Just try to put that little snap ring back onto the back side of this 
pop and it is not easy. Ooh, ha, I got it. Nice. Wanna be flat? Oh, that is so nice. Okay. Let's let's put this back on first. So we're just going to put this back through here. And sometimes these go back on really easy and sometimes, sometimes not so much. bit of slop in this. I wonder if that's what's causing this to not line up. There we go. Ow. Okay, so that's that's back on. And there's a bolt that goes in there. And the spacer goes on the outside. Like this. that okay nice that pins dropped back in so this is put back on this is put back on that pins put back in the spring is in here and depending on now which position we put this in that pivotal rotation is going to change things so I think that I actually want to put this into the um, unlocked position which will Drop that into there, and then I think that's when we can finally slide this piece up from the bottom and put it in. And it goes, goes this way, like this. So you want to make sure that, that this piece on the end of the spring is this way. That's such descriptive language, but as long as you can see what I mean, you'll understand. See how there's uh, three different surfaces cut into this? I think maybe when it changes to that unlocked position, it moves and <coughs> stops on that 45 degree angle face. And then when it goes in the lock position, <coughs> it locks like that. So we actually want it to be in the unlocked position so that this is moved up and makes the holes where we need to put in that pin line up. Because right now all I can see is spring which means it's in the locked position, which would be pushed down like that. So I'm going to change the position on the skid loader so it goes chink, like that. So it turns out there's a better, slightly more dangerous way of doing this, but if you lift this up, then you can work at it from underneath down here. And you can see that I got that at the right angle inside there so that this can kind of slide over it and now with just a little bit more pricking and priming I can get that lined up and I can get that pin started in there so I'm gonna go ahead and work on that okay so I think I got it pretty much lined up now we can grab our uh, pin the new pin which should be pretty tight Um, I actually should start from this side and plan to pound it out the other way. Uh, that's the direction that I pounded it out before. So I'm going to use this pen to kind of hold it so that it's lined up. That's looking good. So, you only need to pound that in until it's sticking out just a tiny bit on this side. Looks like it's sticking out about a quarter inch, and that's what we have on that side. So, 
that is installed properly. Hopefully, hopefully installed properly. All right, so I'm gonna just do a test. You should be able to see that. Should be able to see this go up or down depending on if it's locked or unlocked. So I'm gonna unlock it a couple times. that was going up and down, then that means it should be working perfectly fine. So those are really the uh, basics of what needs to happen with all of the complicated and really annoying to figure out parts. Um, I hope this helped you out some in putting your own skid loader back together, getting all those pieces put together. I just have to do the long tedious part now of putting all the bolts and things and stuff back into their proper places. I need to tighten a bolt there and take this plate, which was also one of the most difficult parts to remove in this whole project. So I'm not going to bore you with that, otherwise the video is going to be really long. So uh, I hope that this helped again, and um, I'm going to put it back together, and then I can go clean the barn. So anyway, I think the most important thing that I learned from this whole process is that you want to make sure there's not a lot of mud and junk crammed up in there and inside here. You saw how this whole thing goes like... And if it's full of mud, it can't do that as happily as it wants to. So anyway, uh, keep that clean. Take good care of your equipment. And it should treat you a lot better. And your wallet will not be quite so empty. So anyway, might take a time lapse as I throw this back together. But otherwise, I think I'm pretty much done. So, good, good project, definitely a good project.